on Storyboard, we speak to Gonzalo Funtis, Global CEO, Media and Digital Practice at Kantar Insights and Ashish Karnad, Executive Vice President, Media and Digital Solutions South Asia, Kantar Milward Brown about their new study which divides 15 to 45 year olds in three groups, Gen X, Gen Y and Gen Z. They also speak about targeting the right consumer group and engaging consumers online. We also get to see the new campaign Paul Coca-Cola featuring Deepika Padukone and speak to Ajay Bhatija, Director Cola's Coca-Cola India about this campaign. At Goa Fest concluded last weekend, we bring to you a glimpse of what went on in Goa. Hello and welcome to Storyboard. This is Shibani Gharat. Kantar Milward Brown in a study divided the consumers into three segments. Gen X in the 35 to 45 year old age group, Gen Y aged 20 to 34 years and Gen Z those between 15 and 19 years. According to this study, social media which drives better reach and brand impact among Gen Z may not have the same impact on Gen X and Gen Y. In fact, according to their study, TV still is the strongest medium to build reach and has salience across all generations. We speak to Gonzalo Fuentes, Global CEO, Media and Digital Practice at Kantar Insights and Ashish Karnad, Executive Vice President, Media and Digital Solutions, South Asia, Kantar Milward Brown about the findings of this study and get their insights on the way in which youth behaves with regard to brands on different mediums. Your study uh, talks a lot about the younger generation, mm -hmm. generation Z, generation Y and so on. And I thought we'll keep the conversation focused in that area because that's a very important demographic for marketers. Yep. Now, part of the problem is uh, these, the generation doesn't watch TV, avoids ads and I see in your study they don't even like pop-ups and so on. So how will a marketer catch these young people? I think, Anant, I guess the, the important thing to notice as well is that the younger generation also likes engaging with brands. Right. So it's not like they are not brand um, um, aware or they are not engaging with brands. Right. Uh, they are actually a very branded generation. Right. So it's more about how brands are engaging with them, right. um, that they tend to be more proactive to avoid um, engagements that invades their day to day. So what are the um, kinds of engagements you see? So, so basically the type of engagements, first of all, is engagements that bring some value to what they do um, or, or bring some value to them. So formats is an important one. Right. So in all honesty, I think it's just that the level of annoyance is, is higher than with other generations. So for example, pop-up right. videos, um, right. um, full screen banners that come in and you need to close, um, forced video in terms of um, having to watch the full 30 seconds or one minute or two minutes of the video before you can access the content right. you want to access, are actually things that in the one hand are very attractive sometimes to advertisers because it ensures that the person has to see the content. But what we've noticed is it actually has a very negative effect on the perception of that brand for the viewer right. because they find it ex very intrusive. And that's one of the reasons why block advertising blocks are, are growing right. um, uh, globally. So I guess the idea or the, the big dilemma is where do I reach the people? Absolutely. And, then, and, and to us it's not about finding different ways to reach the people in an equally intrusive way. To us, the, the, what the industry needs to rethink is going a little bit back to basics, what type, how our creativity can engage people, how we can bring the content at a moment when maybe the annoyance or the, the, the intrusive, intrusivity is lower. Um, so you have to admit in the digital environment that the consumer has the control. So any formats that takes control away from the consumer are going to be formats that are going to w not going to work that yeah. well. Now tell me, Ashish, uh, in India, it, are things as bad as they are, say, in, the, in Europe or in the US, in terms of digital is not so big in India. So do Indian marketers have a little more time to get their act together on, uh, you know, these formats? Do they have time? Well, uh, uh, I don't think so. Right. Uh, things are as bad. 
Okay. Uh, yes, the, the penetration is still much lesser uh, in India than as compared to uh, what we see globally. But we see exactly the same kind of Trend. issues, right. uh, you know, uh, coming out of a study. In fact, you know, when I went to the India study and the global study, there were virtually no differences when it came to, you know, Gen Z saying. That's the, that's the curves or the trends. It's the curves the size is smaller. Proportion size is smaller again. proportion, but the, yeah. the trends are similar. Okay, And one of the things I personally believe why it's happening also is, is also to do with the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of your advertising that is being targeted today, okay, at the youngsters is, uh, like one of our, our other studies shows that 50% of your impressions that are, that are meant to be targeted are targeted outside the target audience. Right. Which means that, I, as an individual, get to see a lot of stuff which is not technically meant for me. And therefore, the irritation in it that is the much irritation greater. is much, much higher. Right. Okay. So, if that happens, so, so to answer your question, if, if we are able to resolve that issue of, you know, keep that perspective in mind, saying that if, if I go and buy the right inventory to ensure that I am reaching the right audience, okay, probably a lot of your issues might get resolved because then you are, like I said, it, it's, it's not about... One of the interesting things you brought up is... Uh, uh, word we don't you hear much with uh, digital, which is creativity. Do you think there's an opportunity for creative directors to regain uh, their, you know, sort of lost ground on digital? Oh, absolutely. You know? abs absolutely. So why do you think marketers are not spending time on digital, on the creative aspect of digital? Well, again, I think it's because um, um, a lot of what digital has, has brought as a concept, and it's true, as a concept is possible, is the idea that if I understand what you like and in, in, in what you're doing, what are your preferences, I can serve you something quickly that will fit that. And that has taken over creativity. Right. right? Um, what we've seen again globally is that the, 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 the advertisers that are using more than one media to, to, to engage with consumers are being more successful. But the challenge of that is, from a creative point of view, is that unless that brand experience is consistent, right. you end up with a schizophrenic brand. So, Kid Witt said a couple of months ago that the thing that keeps him awake is the fragmentation of the brand experience. Right. Sure. So, there is where creativity and having a creative strategy that cuts across different touch points is actually essential. Right. Um, so, to your point, I, we actually believe very strongly that a creative idea today is more important than it has ever been. Right. Because One of the challenges in India, Ashish, is, you know, the uh, challenges that Keith Wheat spoke about is languages, you know, to be consistent across languages and here, if, as we go more and more digital and more mobile, I think we're going to need content in 20, 25 different languages, you know, which is ridiculous, but how will uh, marketers deal with that challenge? So you need to invest. The right. whole point is that, you know, uh, just because something works on TV doesn't necessarily mean it will work exactly the same way on digital. We're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, digital having, uh, you know, uh, gives you the options to be more creative because you can have long formats, you can have various formats, unlike a TV where it's a 30 seconder which will come at you or a 15 seconder uh, which right. will be thrown at you. So there is an opportunity in, in that direction, okay. When it comes to languages, yes, uh, it is a huge, uh, you know, uh, opportunity in terms of how do you want to, uh, you know, how do you want to put out your uh, uh, Message. your messaging there uh, in terms of one video, okay. Because again, when you talk of video, uh, I have seen, I mean, what works on TV may or may not necessarily Absolutely. work. Absolutely, it may not be shot for the small screen. Correct. You know, if I, if I come back to you and ask you, you know, if I ask you to distill your study and say, you've got 30 seconds with a marketer and uh, you want him to read the study that you've spent, invested a lot of money in, but you can tell him only one thing, one reason why you should read your study. What is that one reason? I guess the, the one reason is you need to understand how all the changes in the media landscape, all the things you're doing differently are affecting your brand. Um, um, is, there a, is there a money motivation for him yes, to read? Yes, there yes. is because, you know, one of the, ch the, the advantages and disadvantages that digital has brought is the perception that everything can be measured. Right. right? Um, but a lot of the things that are measured, like click-throughs, um, are very performance-driven metrics. Right. What is driving advertisers then to do very short-term kind of advertising. Right. Um, we have a lot of data that shows that actually investing on brand equity 
has a bigger return on investment than short-term kind right. of advertising. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much for this conversation. Thanks. And I'm sure our viewers would love it. Thank you. All right. It is time for us to take a short break. When we return, we get to see the exclusive preview of the new campaign, Paul Coca-Cola, featuring Deepika Padukone. And we also catch up with Ajay Bhatija, director Cola's Coca-Cola India, about the inside behind this new campaign.